Hello and welcome to the McDonald's Henders County Sports Show on Audio Sports Online and XRBRadio.com, the voice of Henders County. Upcoming on this episode, we'll have a lot to talk about tonight. We'll have the privilege of talking to Avon High School football coach Mark Bless. And he also brought along a few of his players, including running back Derek Tennant and Nick Hanlon, a defensive back. We'll also review all the action from around Hendricks County from last week. The McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show is brought to you by your local Brownsburger Avon McDonald's. Stop in any Brownsburger Avon McDonald's and try one of their $2 tasty specials the jalapeno burger or the triple cheeseburger mcdonald's is a proud supporter of avon and brownsburg athletics and is proud to host the mcdonald's Hendricks county sports show taped wednesday nights on location and aired friday nights before football on xrbradio.com 1610 a.m mcdonald's has two locations in brownsburg and avon in brownsburg they are located at the corner of maine and odell next to marsh and just off of green street next to interstate 74 in avon you can find them at the corner of 267 and 36 next to kroger or on rockville road next to meyer Today is Wednesday, October 1st, 2014, from the Rockville Road McDonald's location, Avon. This is the McDonald's Henders County Sports Show, and I'm your host, J.P. Sinclair, and I'm joined by Avon head football coach, Mark Bless. How are you doing tonight, coach? Doing well, thank you. Well, it was a very, very big week for your team, so let's delve straight into that. Got a big, big win against Fishers. It, it was. Uh, you know, going in, we knew that Fishers uh, was kind of in control of the HCC, so it was a big game for us, a, a great opportunity. And I was very pleased with the way our, our players kind of rose to the occasion. You know, you said it had big implications for the HCC. Let's talk about that a little bit because up to this point, to me, from a casual observing standpoint, it was basically a three-team race. Brownsburg was up there. Uh, you had you guys. And then um, Noblesville was another big one, but they dropped last week. But now you got Westfield coming up. That's another – makes it that part of that three-team race. Right, right. Um, you know, week in, week out, when you play in the HCC, you got competitive teams – uh, you know, as the season go, obviously it sorts itself out. Um, and we kind of feel like that we're, we're kind of in control of that destiny as well if we continue to play well. Well, you know, you stand at 4-2. and two. Um, I believe you're number six, last I checked, in the rankings following a huge win. Argu- like I said, arguably the biggest win of the season uh, against Fishers. I mean, that just had to be a great feeling following that game to get that win. It was. And we knew going in uh, the style of football that Fishers – plays they don't make a lot of mistakes they capitalize on your mistakes when you make them uh, but very well coached fun, fundamentally sound uh, so we knew we had to play a, a good fashion of football and I felt like the, as the game went we got more physical uh, which helped us in the the turnover department as well as being able to run the, the ball in the second half yeah you talk about that second quarter it was really a, the difference in the game um, you know you just outscored Fishers 22-7 in that quarter. Were there any adjustments you te- you made with your team following that first quarter? Well, uh, in the first quarter, I, I was very impressed with the way they moved the ball. You know, they marched right down the, the field, uh, opening possession. Uh, we were fortunate to make a play um, inside of the, the 10-yard line where uh, Matt Thompson sacked, caused a fumble. The fumble rolled back several yards. Uh, they wound up recovering after we touched it a couple times. Um, and so now they're caught with a fourth and really long, and they didn't convert. We take the ball down, go right down the field and score. And then they came back and answered because, um, you know, they got the ball back, went down, scored. I think it was off, off of a turnover, actually. <clears throat> and then probably one of the big plays of the game, after they go up 14-7, to was we held them defensively. We kind of started to knuckle down, playing our style. And uh, Nick Hanlon blocks a punt that sets up um, – the next touchdown for us. And I think that helped us build momentum and, and kind of start taking control of the game. What can you say about the continued growth of Brandon Peters? I mean, we've talked about it all year long, but in a big game like this, stepping up, throwing for over 200 yards and four touchdowns while also rushing for 80 yards. Well, you know, it was kind of weird. After the game, I thought we threw the ball like 35, 40 times. I was amazed to find we didn't find out after the game that we didn't throw it as often as I thought. But I think when he was throwing the ball, he was just so accurate with the ball. And, you know, Andrew Griffin did a great job of, of running his routes and getting open. Matt Moore, uh, Braden Luce, Cole Wrightley. 
So, you know, things were really clicking pretty well in the passing department. But, it, you know, it was weird because after the game, when I found out, you know, what our stats were, I, I was surprised because I thought we threw the ball a bunch. Yeah, he had a good job of the rushing attack as well. But going back to that uh, receiving attack, Junior Andrew Griffin was really a beast in the game. Um, had seven receptions from Peters for 131 yards. And you look at the chemistry that him and Peters have had this year, right. they're only juniors. So right. you have them back next year. Yeah, and I think that, that relationship developed You know, back when they were smaller guys playing in, in travel league probably. And I know in junior high – uh, they def- definitely had a good rapport, and it's just progressed every year. Well, you had uh, Derek, senior Derek Tennant returning. Um, he s- really split the carriers with uh, junior Darian Love, which seemed to give your team a really nice one-two punch in the uh, the running game. Uh, does having that option really help keep opposing defenses on edge? We like it. We like it a lot because it gives us more vers- vers- versatility with, with both Derek and Darian in there. Uh, you know, Darian the week before had a big game for us, over 200 yards rushing against Whiteland. Um, so, you know, he's, he's got talent as well. we got Derek back healthy. Uh, Derek gives us a little bit more, uh, definitely in the protection game, but also he, he does a nice job catching the football with screen routes, whatever we designed for him, and he's got, you know, good stop-and-go action. Uh, so when you throw them both in there and, and you're able to rotate them, I think it, it, it does stress their defense. Yeah, because you get strengths from both of them. And it really can keep those those defenses on edge, but having split them like that, you know, gives you a nice, like I said, one-two punch. Absolutely. Uh, defensively, your team got after Fisher's quarterback Zach Eaton. They they hit him for three sacks in this one. Did you feel like your team had a decisive advantage in the trenches? Well, I, I thought so. I thought, especially after their first two possessions, because they kind of pushed us around and they ran the ball extremely well. They've got two good running backs as well, and I think once we got our feet under us and understood the tempo of the game that our defense started taking control of the line of scrimmage. Um, our linebackers flowed well, and then our secondary was, did a great job covering, too. Well, I do also want to talk about, uh, we had the privilege of talking to senior Gabe Blackstons on an earlier episode, um, and he really, he's you know, had a really good season on both sides of the ball, and in right. particular in this one, he had 15 tackles defensively, and one of those tackles was for loss, but offensively he also had two receptions for 49 yards and one touchdown. What does it say about his ability on the football field to be so good on either side of the ball? You know, and he's learning all the time. Um, you know, this first year, probably since his freshman year, he's jumping over to the offense to help us play receiver. So, you know, we're pulling time and a half away from him, and it's difficult for some players to be able to do that. But he's been able to focus and hone in on his uh, his coverage skills. Um, you know, the week before against Whiteland, I think he had a crucial pick. Uh, we, we typically will put Gabe on, on one of their best receivers, and he handles the pressure very well, and he's able to help us out on offense as well. Yeah, it really doesn't get any easier for your team as now they have to travel to Westfield to face a 4-2, a and two, very tough Shamrock team. You know, this is a team that made the state championships last year before they fell to Cathedral. Um, they have senior Elvin Caldway. He's averaging 5.5 yards per carry. He has 127 rushes on the year for 699 yards, but they also have more in dimension for that rushing attack as well. Um, Caldwell does have 11 touchdowns. Do you feel like your team can really slow down the rushing attack uh, and force the junior um, – Ryan Pepiot to throw to have a good chance of victory? Well, we, we got our hands full. Uh, their offensive line does a nice job of staying on blocks. Um, um, the Caldwell runner, he, you know, he's a bowling ball. He is very strong. He's got some quicks, but he's just a put together young man. So we got to make sure that we uh, hit him before he gets going, try to get more than one guy in on the tackle, but limit his yards that he gets after he get, you know, gets the first hit because it seems like he gets a lot of yards. Once he takes the first hit, he spins or runs through it. So we've got to make sure we club him up and, and get more than one guy in on the tackle. Um, you know, we've got to be careful what we wish for sometimes because, you know, when you shut down a, a good running attack and they're capable of running the ball, we've got to make sure we're ready to defend the, run, or the pass if we're capable of shutting down the run. Yeah, you talk about that passing game. Uh, junior Ryan Pepe had, has seven touchdowns to his name this year, but also six interceptions. So he has been a little bit prone when it comes to the turning the ball over. Is that something you look to try and capitalize in this well, one? Well, th- I think the key to that is make sure you're able to pressure the quarterback, force him into throwing the ball when he's not in rhythm, forcing him to throw the ball uh, a little bit early, and, and that happens with a good pass rush. And I think you know we got to be able to contain him and, and kind of – keep him in the pocket but get good pressure on him and let our secondary go after the ball. One of the th- main things about Pepiot is his the three-headed 
monster I saw when I was looking up the stats in their their receiving core of uh, Lafallon, Beam, and Henderson, all who have over 200 yards in the receiving game and two touchdowns, and they can get the job done throwing the ball. Exactly, exactly. And we've worked pretty hard this week on making sure we cover some of their key receivers, uh, knowing the route combinations we're going to be seeing. And, you know, that that's something that you rehearse over and over and over in practice, and our players have to be able to execute it on game night. Do you feel like going on the road for this uh, this game against Westfield, does that put your team at a disadvantage? Well, um, you know, we're used to playing on turf. We played on um, on grass at Whiteland. We'll be playing on grass Friday at Westfield. We need to make sure that we handle that. And, we, you know, we've practiced on, on grass this week, but our players sometimes get comfortable on turf. Maybe a little bit more you can do. <clears throat> so we need to make sure that we're focused and we're ready for, to start the game and be physical because – Last year when we played Westfield, I thought that they brought the game to us, especially the first two quarters, and now we're playing catch-up. And it's hard to play catch-up mode against a good team. So I think we got to be able to control what we can control and make sure we're ready to start a game against Westfield. We talked about it earlier in the season. You said that Ben Davis game was really a measuring stick to where your team was. Coming away from this win against Fishers, does, do you still kind of feel like that was a good measuring stick to see where your team was, at least when compared to the rest of the HCC? Well, I, th- I think, you you know, week by week reevaluate where you're at. And, you know, that, that week when we played Ben Davis, you know, that, that was a measuring stick game for us. Uh, we found out we got some more work to do. And then, you know, you look at your schedule and the next tough opponent, you want to say, okay, we've got to match a certain phase of something they do. And, and I think we've been able to progress as, as we've gone and develop as a team. Well, uh, wish you the best of luck uh, this week against Westfield and continuing along the season. We'll take a quick timeout, and when we come back, we'll sit down with running back Derek Tennant and defensive back Nick Hanlon. You're listening to the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show on audiosportsonline.net. This is the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show on audiosportsonline.net, brought to you by your local Brownsburg and Avon McDonald's. We just stop in any Brownsburg or Avon McDonald's and try one of their two $2 tasty specials, the jalapeno burger or triple cheeseburger. McDonald's is a proud supporter of Avon and Brownsburg Athletics and is proud to host the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show, taped Wednesdays on location and aired Friday nights before football on xrbradio.com and xrb1610 a.m. Of course, McDonald's has two locations in Brownsburg and Avon. Brownsburg locations are just at the corner of Maine and Odell next to Marsh. And just off Green Street next to Interstate 74 in Avon, you can find them at the corner of 267 and 36 next to Kroger or where we're at tonight at the Rockville Road location next to Meyer. You can stop in either Brownsburg or Avon McDonald's for their $2 tasty specials, the jalapeno burger or triple cheeseburger today. Well, we got a special treat here for you, a couple of Avon players that, of course, you Avon fans are going to know. They're both seniors. First up here is uh, Nick Hanlon, defensive back, uh, safety, where's number 28. Nick, I uh, want to thank you for joining us. Uh, yep, congratulations on your senior year here. Get that a little closer in there. There we go. Um, hey, congratulations on last week's uh, big win, the Fishers win. That, that had to feel good for you guys. Yeah, it was great. Just coming out and beating a good team and yeah. showing people what we can, do, how we can play. Yeah, I think a lot of us who had maybe seen Fishers or, or you know, knew about their play this year, uh, you know, we thought they were the best team in the conference. 
and here you guys come out. You know, you, get, you do some good things, and that, that was a big win. Now you you made a couple big plays in that game, Nick. He had a block punt, and I think he had an interception too, right? No, not a game. I did not. Okay, but you had the block punt. Yes, I did. How'd you get in there on that play? What happened on that? Um, we uh, kind of mixed up where I was coming through because I get keyed in a lot over uh, just over the varsity my varsity career, having mm-hmm. three previous or yeah three previous block punts, and just kind of mixing up Coach Carnes our. Uh, Part, one of our coordinators for that put me in a good position to make a good play. Good. Well, that was a big play. Now, is that something, um, Nick, that you have a, a have a green light on that, hey, I can get in there and block a punt, or sometimes you get held back, or like, you know, you hear about in football, well, we're going to put the block on. Are you pretty free to make that decision, or the coach is keeping um, on you there and say, hey, go ahead or hold in, back? In certain situations, uh, you know, if, if they're good, a good uh, – have a good fake in or if they're in a fake situation sometimes i'll play back but uh for the most part it's it's basically just depends on the situation sure now how'd, how'd you get into playing the defensive back here in your in your football career man uh i started off coming to my freshman year as a linebacker that's why i played in middle school and then uh a little undersized mm-hmm. and so i Saw my footwork and what I could do, so move me to safety and uh, corner. Well, you know, to play back there too, you got to have some speed. Right? Yeah, so you can run a bit, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and then, of course, uh, I wanted to ask you too. Of course, it's important for you guys, you know, back there, uh, reading the uh, run versus the pass play. You know, safety, defensive backs. I know everybody's thinking out there, but you guys got to really watch. What, what have you learned here now? Now that you're a senior season, as far as reading. You know whether this play is going to be a run or pass. Um, a lot of times, I'm just looking at the uh, end guy in line of scrimmage, and uh, if he's coming down and blocking, his head's normally going to be down. Mm-hmm. And if uh, he's pass blocking, he's going to come up. Shoulders are going to come up. You're going to see his eyes, and uh, you know, get in your back pedal and keep your head on a swivel. Yep, terrific. Okay, Nick, um, have you ever had an, an interception return for a touchdown? Uh, not my varsity career. I've had a few JV, but uh, this year. Both uh, my catches have been right in on a receiver, so they're right okay, there to wrap me up. Okay. Maybe you can get that done for the end of the year. For Absolutely. Us, huh? Okay. Um, and then I know you guys started off the year in a big way with the Lucas Oil game. How was that playing down there? That was amazing. Yeah. It was something uh, I always wanted to do, looking forward to my whole high school sure. career, seeing all the guys above me getting to play there, and it was just great being able to come out there and playing kind of that, that kind of atmosphere sure. under the lights in the uh, stadium. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. We, and I think you guys use a different locker room, but you had to, you know, you're down there in the big time seeing all those facilities, right? Yeah. It's it's amazing. Yep. Um, I did want to ask you, too, uh, you know, as you look back now to Senior Nick, is, is there one big moment, and maybe that Lucas Oil game, but a big moment or a big game that stands out for you that you've played so far, or maybe a couple? Um, I'd have, I mean, for me, I'd have to say the, the LC game. Uh, just as far as the whole team coming together and realizing, hey, we're down, and everyone just kind of fighting to get that win. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. Yep. And the, Nick, what for yourself? What do you do to get up for a game? Now I know you know you're playing on a big time program. You got good coaches and good good players around you. But is there something you like to do to get up for a game? You know, I know a lot of guys like to listen to music for the game or whatever they can do. Yeah, I uh, I normally try to stay loose. I never really get too tight or too nervous. Uh, I just – it's never been me just to get get the butterflies. I mean, sure, everybody gets a little bit of it, yeah. but I just feel like I can really block that out and stay ready and, you know, listen to a little music, yeah. get you in the little swagger, yeah. get that good, going. Good. Okay, and then, Nick, you know, I know you guys do a lot of strength and conditioning work. Are you still doing some now? You know, we've got three games left. Do you do, you do much uh, weightlifting? I think you guys have a morning program, but you still doing that during the Yeah, uh, we're still – the guys, most of the football team, I think pretty much all of them are in the APC with Coach Ballou, and he's still – our reps are lowered down, you know, uh, what they were. It's, uh, still trying to get stronger in the beginning of the season yeah. and keep that up, but they've kind of backed it off a little bit to make sure that we're not overdoing anything, but we're still still getting stronger every week. Yeah. And then one time, you know, something fans that come to a game on Friday night don't see is all the, all the like you just said, the conditioning, the weightlifting, and the practice time you guys put in, you know, each day. Just wanted to ask you here now in your senior season, you're, you're almost done. you got yeah. a little ways to go, Nick, but is, is practice for you right now, is it, is it still fun or is it a chore? Uh, it's still fun to come out there every day, and you know you have a task at hand to to complete. You know you got to get ready for that Friday night, whether it's watching film after practice, staying back, doing one on ones with uh, the receivers, and just making sure that you have everything down 
for that game on Friday. Nick, you know, uh, as you look back now, is there somebody who uh, who's really helped you along in your game or helped helped you develop as a football player? Yeah, um, our defensive coordinator and uh, defensive back coach, Coach Bomby, is really he's hard on us and he's been hard on me uh, throughout my career. But it's all been it's all been worth it because he knows what's best for all of us, and him pushing me has really helped me become uh, the player I am right now. Terrific, uh, Nick. Um, what do you think senior night's going to be like? I know you got a big game this this weekend, of course, at Westfield. But have you thought about what's that senior night going to be like for you? I haven't put a lot of thought into it. It's just going to – it'll be special. Yeah. You know, it'll be uh, something you only have once. Right. And I think for, it'll be fun for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, of course, we always ask our seniors, do you got any plans for next year, Nick? I know you got plenty of time, you know, but uh, any plans for next year yet? Um, for next year, I'm looking uh, for a baseball scholarship right now. Mm-hmm. That's uh, my main sport that uh, I go out and – can really compete in. I'm a pitcher and an outfielder. And so right now I'm still going to camps and stuff on Saturdays to various colleges that have contacted me. And so um, I'm just looking for the offer right now. And okay. So, of course, you're going to play baseball this you know, this spring? Mm-hmm. Good. Well, we'll look for you then, Nick. And we, thanks so much for joining us. Wish you big luck uh, here Friday night and also the end of your senior season. Thank, Thank you. All right, on our McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show, we're going to have another uh, player in here for you. Like we said, we know Avon fans uh, certainly know this guy good. Running back, uh, he's, you know, everybody thinks of him as uh, one of the best running backs here in central Indiana. Been very productive for the Avon Orioles. We know Coach Bless really likes him, done a lot of things. Number 25, here's Derek Tennant, Tennant, everybody. So welcome, Derek. I know you're a senior, too. How about that win last week versus Fisher? I mean, that was fun for you. Got a touchdown in there late. You know, and I know maybe you didn't get all the carries you wanted, but uh, that was a big win. Yeah, it was. It always feels good just coming out the gate strong and, you know, defeating a, a, a great team, you yeah. know. It, I, I really enjoyed the lights Friday night. Yeah, and then that was good. Of course, you put the capping touchdown on that. I know that was well, maybe a four-yard run or so, but that had to feel good getting in the end zone. And then you, put, you, you guys pretty much think, I know it's not over till it's over. We're going to play to the final whistle, but that had to feel good getting that last score. Yeah, it did. You know, my my big guys up front did a yeah. did a great job of springing me, making a hole for me, and I just did my job from there. Right. Your senior season, Derek, and I guess maybe your whole career, has it, has it gone fast for you? You know, you're almost done, man. you got a little ways to go, but has it gone fast to you? I can't even tell you how fast it went. Wow. Uh, I mean, you you look up, and yeah. you in spring, something summer ball, and mm-hmm. and then you look up, you in week six playing Fisher. So. Yeah, incredible. I mean, if, it flies. It's incredible how, how quick it goes. So. Yeah, that's what I figured. And then how about that uh, big, uh, you know, Lucas Oil Stadium game for you? You know, there's been a lot of great running backs down there at the stadium and then, of course, the history of the Colts running back. So that had to feel good <laughs> good to you down there. Yeah, it did. Once again, my big guys did their thing, so I did my thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good, good. Uh, is there a pro running back you like like to watch, Derek? Um, well, my favorite running back, it might sound funny because everyone – I always talks about Adrian Peterson, but sure. Sean McCoy in my eyes, yeah. pretty much the best best running back in the yeah. game. Been that way since three years ago. So I really like his style. He's a, he's a great player. Good. Look can, up to him a lot. Yeah. Can Can you guys learn some things from watching watching them? I'm sure you can. Actually, most of my moves come from me playing Madden. Oh no, kidding. <laughs> so, okay. okay. Sure does. That's right. No No problem with that. Now, Derek, we're, we're glad you're going. You're You're feeling good now, and, and you've had to deal with some injuries. We know that this senior season, and uh, so, you've been able to rehab. And uh, I bet you put some work in. You know, getting getting yourself better this year. Yeah, I have. Uh, injuries suck because they slow you down a lot. I don't know, but I was just really looking forward to doing whatever I had to do to get back yeah. on the field. Yeah, and you're doing it. We're glad to see you back now, man. Thank you. Uh, looking back here, is there a favorite game or big-time moment you remember from your Avon football so far? Any win is good for me. Any win, that's I good. don't care. <laughs> that's right. A win is fine. Yeah, well, you've put together quite a few of them, Derek. You've done a good job, man. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, how about your practice time now, getting ready to wrap up? Does it still seem like a – you still enjoy getting out there and practice? Of course, a running back, you know, you're going to do a lot of different things, but – uh, practice still good for you or is, is it hard work or is it still fun uh it's always hard work practice for me i always look forward to it after school i'm just okay. itching i'm always itching at seven period ready to get out on the practice field it's always something you can work on so yeah. i love getting out there getting better so derek now do you, do you do running on your own you know by your side on your own time you know some running work uh yeah we 
uh besides all the work we do yeah. uh i mean it's always time to get better so mm-hmm. anything i can do i'm always up i'm always up for it so Good, good. You know, you guys, of course, this is a big-time program here at Avon. You always have good crowds. That, and, and, you know, when you guys have the ball on offense, that crowd kind of help you. And I know you have a big student section. So what does a crowd, a good crowd mean to you, Derek Tim? Well, a good crowd, they stays in the game. The, the game, it's just, they say the 12th man, and the right. crowd is really the 12th man. I mean, it, it's, it's really true because – our football team feeds off that energy. Yep. Parents, everyone that's on the sideline, we, we all feed off of them. I, I just love the energy we get from our fans. Good. And then going on the road like you're going to tomorrow, Sir. W- what happens then? I, I always hear, you know, as a football team, we're going to b- b- bind together. And, and a, lot of, a lot of players like going on the road like that. Big, tough situation, which you're going to have against Westfield. But what about your road games? Me, personally, I love road games because – I love the sound. I love the sound of their their crowd when oh. they just go just <laughs> shut down. Yeah, I love that. Put the silence on them. Yeah, put are, the silence yeah. on. <laughs> good, good. Um, and then Derek, I wanted to ask you too. Is there anything you do special to get pumped up for a game? I imagine you're ready. I know you're an energetic guy, but is it something you do to get pumped up for a game? Well, I just like listen to the music. Ace Hood, my favorite rapper, so mm-hmm. I like I like listening to his music. He always seems to any song it. Any song he gets, it just put it in my headphones and just seems to turn me on. It's just a go. switch flip. It's just something to help you too. And I know you're you're pumped up in warm ups for the game. So yes, sir. Anything will help you. Now you got a big game coming up here against uh, Westfield. What what do you expect from uh, from this game? And uh, you know your coach talked a little bit about you maybe on some natural turf, maybe a little wet conditions. That's going to be a little different for running back. Yeah, we I've been watching watching a lot of film on them. They got really great players on their team. I, I respect them a lot, but. It's a game we just got to come out here and win. Yeah, yeah, big one. Okay. And then, Derek, too, we're just going to ask you about uh, – And I know you got some time here, but uh, any plans for next year yet? Plans for next year? I really want to just play, continue, see how far this football can take me. Sure. So sure. whoever whoever gives me a shot is going to get a great player. So Yeah, well, they should. And everybody around the Avon program knows that. You've been terrific, uh, Derek. So Sir, thank wish you. you the best luck of the rest of the season and your, and your senior season. Good luck, man. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. All right, Thank Derek. you. Welcome back to McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show. I'm J.P. Sinclair, uh, alongside Chris Worley. And once again, I mean, talking to some of these students, particularly those of Avon, I mean, just articulate. And, and I know Derek, I thought that had been a really fun interview. Yeah. You know, he's meant a lot to this program. And, uh, and you know, we, we didn't want to talk too much about it, but he's dealt with some injuries. And, of course, this year's senior season. You never want to be injured ever, but, you know, your senior season, you want to want to have a big season. So, but he's done a good job dealing with them. You know, he's having his, like you guys talked about, his workload split a little bit. Of course, as a running back, you want to get all the carries and do all the things. But uh, he's had a great attitude about it, worked himself back into shape, done a good job. And, of course, Nick, uh, good senior, what a good kid. And, but he had a big game last week with that block punt. Uh, so that was big. Yeah, you talked about that block punt. It really, 
as we were talking to Coach Bless before the you know before we came on the air, that was really a big momentum shift in that Fisher's sure. game. Yeah, and I think all the coaches will tell you anytime you get a block punt, you know it, it really helps you. And if you get it, your punt block, it really hurts you. So that that was a big play, and he made a couple of others good plays during that game. But what a big win for Avon over Fisher's. Well, let's talk a little bit about last week. We continued on with our Pick'em Challenge. Um, in last week's games, we both had Warren Central over Pike. So that turned out to be a victory for both of us. And then we both picked Fishers over Avon. Yeah. So we went against our better judgment, and we, uh, we lost on yep. that one. And then, uh, and then the game we split on was Chattard and Noblesville, and I turned out to be sorely wrong on that one. As you picked Chattard, I picked Noblesville, and I couldn't have been more wrong on that one. Yeah, boy, Chattard looking awful good this year. I wouldn't be surprised to see them in the – yeah, they're in 4A, I think. Yeah, 4A state championship game. Yeah, I think uh, you'll see a Ron Colley possibly Chattard matchup somewhere along the line of the sectionals. That should be a good matchup. Um, but uh, we each went two and one on the week. So when it was all said and done, you notched another win and now lead seven to five. So okay. I still got my work cut out for me. So let's go ahead and take a look at this week's feature games. We have five and one Ben Davis against six and old Carmel, and this one is going to be one of those great matchups between two teams with state sure. title hopes. Oh, sure, always is. I think they used to meet annually, and then they kind of went away from that. But uh, sure. Great matchup. I, I don't know who picks first. I hope you do. Uh, actually, you you pick first. I got to pick first last week. Okay. Well, in this one, uh, boy, I'd hate to pick against Ben Davis. I, I thought about actually doing a coin flip on this, but uh, Carmel, of course, always great. Uh, I looked at their schedule. If I had to say uh, who had the tougher schedule, it would be Ben Davis. But, I mean, uh, the Mick Conference, period. Sure. You know, you look at, like we talked about, we talked about last week, you know, that Pike schedule was just horrendous yeah. to start the year. I mean, you had Ben Davis, yeah. Warren Central, Lawrence Central, uh, Brownsburg. It right. was just a really rough schedule for Pike right off the bat. Yeah, no doubt. I'm going to say uh, the last meeting was Ben Davis 28-24 last, last October. So I'm going to say Carmel gets him back here at home. I'm going with Carmel. All right, so that means I got the Giants. A uh, little side note on this game. According to the Indianapolis Star, you know, Kyle Nindenkamp does yeah. such a great job reporting. Sure uh, he did mention that the last two times that Carmel uh, faced Ben Davis and they were undefeated, they lost both those Ooh. games. So okay. uh, a little bit of history might be working against them. We'll see if Carmel can get, get off that schneid. Yeah. Uh, the other game that I put down was Western Boone, who is six and 6-0, mm-hmm. uh, visits Jake Hendershot, one yeah. of our favorite players talked yeah. about on the show, and Tri West, who are a very impressive 5-1. and one. Uh, Good Sagamore conference matchup. I think this will be a defensive battle. Mm-hmm. I wish it wasn't on Friday night. I wish something so you we could, could get this moved to Saturday night because <laughs> I would definitely go. But, uh, yeah, just a tremendous uh, matchup right here. Um, I, the last meeting, Tri-West got them uh, last October. It was a close one then, 28-20. So maybe a little more points scored than, than you would have thought, JP. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I'm glad you're picking first on this one. All um, right. Well, here, here's the, my reasoning. I mean, like I said, this will be a defensive battle. I mean, Tri-West is only allowing seven points per game, and ah, they have I Jake Hendershot. Yep. So when you combine those two factors, I think it swings heavily in Tri-West's favor. They, they do, I think they're, they're due to get the, the win against Western Boone. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay the same with you on that. I'm going with Tri-West, too. I think at home, you know, like I've said, I think Jake is the best quarterback in Henderson County. I'm, I'm sorry, Brandon Peters and uh, – you know, well, everybody else, Brandon Peters has another year. <laughs> right, he does. He does. And Hunter Johnson has two years. I think by the time he's a senior, Hunter Johnson may be the best of the lot. But uh, we'll go with Tri-West. Okay, so we both have Tri-West in that one. And finally, uh, I wanted to throw a little bit of mid-state in there. Uh, yeah. We have a good matchup yeah. this week uh, with four and two records uh, combining uh, in both these teams in Greenwood and Decatur Central, both at four and two on the season. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at Greenwood, uh, they got – uh, skill, a great quarterback, a great dual threat. They have Gallman, a good running sure. back. And then Decatur Central counters with almost kind of a similar attack, and, and their quarterback can really run or throw the ball um, with Tommy Stevens, an IU recruit. And then also mm-hmm. from the backfield, they, they have a couple of different options. One that I was really impressed with when I saw the game against Plainfield last week was the uh, the freshman, Tyrone Tracy, for Decatur Central. It was absolutely amazing to watch. You look at his stats – for a freshman, they're absolutely gaudy. Yeah. He, this guy is going wow. to be a beast by the time he's a senior. Sure. What kind of size does he have? He's only 5'7". He needs to put on a little bit of weight, I think, uh, particularly if he's going to be playing out of the backfield. They, they really, It's really weird when they line him up because, you know, you look at Decatur Central, they typically will have two uh, tailbacks behind Tommy Stevens, kind of like in an offset pistol formation. Um, but... Most of the time, Tyrone Tracy's not in that formation. Oh. He's almost lining up as a tight end and coming in motion oh, all the time. Okay. So you never know if he's coming out of the backfield, if he's going to be going down for receive, behind, reception. Yeah, yeah he's, okay. he's just wow. – I mean, that's another weapon that Coach Justin Dixon has sure. to use in that offense. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I guess it's my pick on this one. I'm, I'll, I'm, I would agree with the, what you said. I know you, you're familiar with both these teams. I'm gonna. I think you're gonna pick Decatur Central, so I'm going. I'm going Greenwood. Well, you don't have to if you want. No, pick- no, I understand. I'm going for Greenwood in the upset. Uh, last year, uh, Decatur Central got them big time, 40-19. I don't know where that game was at, but I think Greenwood, uh, they're working hard in practice all week. They get the win. Yeah, you, you call it. I'm going with Decatur Central. Okay. Um, I was really impressed when I saw them last week against Plainfield, and you can always check out that archived uh, uh, yeah. game on audiosportsonline.com. But, you know, I knew going into it Decatur Central was going to be good. I didn't know they were going to be that good. Right. Uh, and I've just I've been continually amazed with the progress that Tommy Stevens has made as a quarterback. Um, and like I said, the weapons. I you know I was wondering where they were going to get a lot of their rushing attack from after Eli Conlon left last year, uh, their senior running back. But they have a couple different options that have really stepped up well. And I was like I said, I was just amazed with what I saw yeah. in Tyrone Tracy. He's he's super dangerous in the open field. When when we discuss whatever the result of this game is next week, I, I'm going to bring it. We we need Decatur Central's remaining schedule. They should have two games left after that. Tournament times. Coming up, JP. Yeah, I can find that real quick. Um, but let's go and talk about some results from last week. Yeah. And uh, the varsity football team fell to Westfield last Friday. Uh, Brownsburg didn't score in this one until the fourth quarter, Chris. Yeah, yeah it, was a, it was a tough game. You know, Brownsburg defense uh, held, held their own. I mean, when we did the pregame show and everything, we were looking at Brownsburg's defense, uh, you know, who, which has given up the most points in the conference. Uh, they've struggled at times. They're young, a young unit, start a lot of sophomores. You know, are they going to be able to hold uh, this Westfield team down? And, uh, well, the problem is almost the opposite uh, in that Westfield held Brownsburg down. They really stopped uh, Tokes on the run, tried to get some other things going. Tyler Kurtz, uh, the fine wide receiver of the Bulldogs, had uh, I think he had over 10 catches, but uh, that was a very tough game. I was impressed with Westfield's line on both sides of the ball, both their offense and defensive line. Yeah, they're a 5A school. They're playing 6A uh, you know, Brownsburg, they're playing a 6A school in Avon, but their line can hold their own with anybody. And as Coach Comer told us, they've got kids who've played a lot of big-time games. You know, they were in the state championship game last year, so Westfield, much the better last week. Brownsburg put on a good surge in the fourth quarter. Kids didn't give up, got uh, got some good things going in the fourth quarter, but it wasn't enough to defeat the Westfield Shamrocks. Yeah, I was talking with uh, Coach Bless while you were interviewing uh, Derek, and, and uh, you know, I was talking to him about that Westfield attack. You know, the only eight, only weakness I can possibly see on the offensive side of the ball is in their quarterback, who does have some very impressive numbers, but yeah. he has thrown seven touchdowns to six interceptions. Yeah. That's really the only lone weakness. Um, yeah. They have multiple receivers that do a really great job in the open field. Yeah. Um, have a lot of re- you know re- a lot of receptions. Each of them, like as we talked about, have over two hundred yards. Yeah. Um, and they have a, a very versatile running attack because yeah. they have more than one, you know, more than one rusher getting a dominant amount of the carries. Yeah, good, good athletic team, and also they um, have put up a lot of yards in the in the kick and punt return game. So uh, very dangerous, though. That was a that was a big loss for Brownsburg. You know, they started three and one. Now they've lost two straight, and you hate to lose on homecoming like that. Uh, so that loss hurt. Uh, this next game for Brownsburg at Zionsville, I'm, I'm kind of calling it to, for them to have a winning record. This this game's a must win Friday night. Yeah, and uh, we talked talking a little bit more inside the numbers on that Brownsburg game. I mean, sophomore Hunter Johnson really was forced to throw a lot yeah. in this game, uh, a lot more than he normally would anyway, uh, given the deficit being so uh, so in favor of Westfield. But you know, give Westfield credit. You talked about they really they slowed down talks. Uh, yeah, talk, tokes. Yep, they did. They they really did. You know, their defensive line was very very tough, good size, and uh, they did they did the job. We're used to Tokes breaking free at some point, but he just just couldn't do it against Westfield. And that's the only team this year that's held him down. Yeah, held him to sixty seven yards yeah. in that one. Uh, you wanted to know Decatur Central's remaining schedule after Greenwood. They're at Ron Colley, and oh. then they're at Franklin Community okay. to finish the year. Well, you'll be interested in that Ron Colley game, and then at Franklin Community. Uh, we, Brownsburg played Franklin, uh, you know, second or third week of the season. They can be tough, but uh, Decatur Central has a good chance. If they can get past Greenwood here, uh, the Ron Colley game will be very tough. But they got a good chance to win two out of their next three, which they probably should do. Yeah, the boys' varsity cross-country team ran to a runner-up finish uh, to champion Zionsville in Saturday's nine-team Southport Invitational. Harry Saffamurthy uh, once again led the dogs, uh, but this time he was the individual champion with a time of 16 minutes and 31 oh. seconds uh, during the 3.1-mile race. So congratulations to, uh, to Harry. Yeah, yeah. Now there's another kid's name you've been mentioning all season, so he's been at the top of Brownsburg boys' cross-country. 
Uh, the girls' cross-country team placed third at Saturday's Southport Invitational, just behind good squads from Zinesville and Connorsville. The top three remain steady with the uh, the front of the pack is Juliet Poppenfuss, another name we've mentioned a lot this year, yeah. uh, placed third overall with a uh, time of 19 minutes and 56 seconds. Cassie Brown was sixth, and Sydney Montgomery was seventh. It's cross-country sectionals this, this weekend. They're right. about to wrap up. Yep, they're wrapping up okay. as well. A lot of the fall sports are wrapping yeah. up. Uh, we'll talk about uh, girls' golf, which uh, pretty much right. wrapped up last week. And yeah. um, Let's go and talk about it right now. Over the weekend, uh, the girls' golf team for Brownsburg competed in regionals and went up against some of the top teams in the state. When you think about regional competition, uh, with the winning score of 312 and uh, low medalist advancing at 79, Matt, uh, Matty Cody uh, for the Bulldogs and Morgan Kier came in with a score of 85 each. Um, so it wasn't quite the finish they would have liked. But when you look at it, you know, got a sectional championship on the yeah, year. That was big. And they still have youth, you know, two mm-hmm. juniors and three freshmen. Right. And, and I also noticed from that weekend's action, Maddie Cody got a good uh, picture in Sunday's Indianapolis Star Papers. Yeah, she, she was there. And I remember that. Right. But, uh, yeah, and if, if you're a sectional champion in high school, you're very proud of that. And that, that makes a good season. If you can get past regionals and on – Terrific. Now, sometimes you're a big favorite and expected to do that, but I don't think Brownsburg was, so they've, they've, that was a good season for them. I think the caption read, wasn't happy with the punt. Yeah, uh, yeah or the, it was a the, punt. The punt. Yeah, you, you could see her. It was, it was a really good picture of her, and, I, yeah, I'm glad you saw that. But, uh, Maddie got a good picture. I'm sure she, she kept that one somewhere. Uh, the boys' varsity team uh, had a rough night losing yeah. 5-0 against the highly ranked undefeated Terre Haute South squad. Uh, the boys' varsity team finished the regular season with a 3-2 loss against Ben Davis. Sam Peterson played a good match at number one singles, but uh, lost 7-6, 6-4. Uh, number two singles player Greg Foling, another name we've mentioned all season Real long, deal. Uh, pulled off another persistent effort, winning 6-4, 6-7, and then 10-8 in the uh, tiebreaker. Uh, Mason Lovett just missed a comeback win in his match at the number three spot. So uh, not exactly the way that I'm sure Coach would have liked to end the season, um, to end the season, excuse me, I should say. Uh, the varsity will be uh, starting sectional play this weekend, though. Yeah, a lot of tennis sectionals getting started tonight. And I think Plainfield plays Avon in tennis tonight. The winner plays Brownsburg Thursday night. And I think that, that is a home match. It's at Brownsburg in sectional play. So they'll play either Plainfield or Avon uh, Thursday. Uh, the volleyball team went to uh, the Burbuff Invitational Saturday and came away with a 2-1 uh, victory to improve their season record to 16-3. and uh, The Volley Dogs beat, uh, I'm going to really butcher this name, but I'm going to try, uh, Makanaqua. That's it. Uh, 2-0 in the first match and lost uh, to the top-ranked team in the nation, Mercy, 25-16, 25-19, in a hard-fought match. But when you talk about top team in the nation, ranked number yep. one in the nation, yep. that's, some good, uh, that's a good measuring stick. Yep, yep. Uh, the Bulldogs then uh, beat... 3A, number one ranked per buff, 3-1. So. Right. Well, I finally saw him. I went to this next match. Yeah, you did say out. that on yep. Facebook. At uh, Center Grove. Center Grove was the number one team in the state, but really been wanting, out and, wanting to get out and see these. Uh, yeah, they call themselves the Volley Dogs, but uh, and they were 16-3 and three going into the number one Center Grove, and they played a very tough match down there. It was just this past Monday night. Uh, Center Grove got the first two sets off them. Brownsburg didn't give up. You know, it's best three out of five sets in volleyball. Didn't give up. Won that, uh, won that next set to make it 2-1, and then Center Grove was able to get them in a close one. The uh, total set score was 3-1. to one. But I'll tell you what, that is a lot of fun. I'm going again. I can't wait to see these girls again. Um, it's very fast-paced. It's good action. It's only $5 to get in. Of course, the JV is first, and then, and then the varsity comes on. But these girls are tremendous. Uh, you had some stats there from Brooke Gregory and Avery Brown. Yeah, you can go ahead and read yeah, those. Yeah, Brooke, uh, they had 18, 13 kills each. Brooke Gregory's a tall player. She plays along the front line for Brownsburg. And, man, she's skilled. She can get up there and uh, get some kills. Uh, Avery did a good job, too. Uh, this was an impressive effort uh, this past Monday night by the team's emotional leader, which is a junior, Claire Hathaway. She had to play through a tough ankle injury. I talked to her mom right before the match, and she wasn't sure she was going to play. But she played the whole match. Uh, now, they do rotate and substitute out a little bit, but uh, Claire was uh, fantastic, uh, played through a tough ankle injury, still got some blocks, still got up there, and after the match, she said, my ankles were really, really sore. I bet so, she iced it yeah, <laughs> after the yeah, match. Yeah, she was doing ice, but I don't know if they have a match tonight and tomorrow night. And the volleyball schedule, you know, I it, It's at brutal for, towards yeah, the tail end. Yeah, they have three or four matches a week, so I don't know how those girls do it, but uh, volleyball is fantastic. Yeah, you know, you talked about how fast-paced volleyball is. It's probably, in my opinion, the hardest sport there is to do play-by-play for because the action is just so back and forth. And it's a very physical game for those oh, yeah. girls. I mean, it, it's no wonder they wear knee pads. They're diving all over the place and jumping. Got to get those digs. Yep, that's right. I was very impressed. I love volleyball, and I'll be going back this season. I'm sorry I went so late. 
Uh, the team plays at Cardinal Ritter tonight, home against Zinesville tomorrow, and Ron Colley on Sunday, as you talked about. Uh, very, very uh, busy, busy schedule, schedule coming wow. up for the Volley Dogs. Let's go and take a look now at Plainfield High School. The Plainfield football team fell uh, one f- to one and five on the year, following a devastating matchup against a very good Decatur Central team. Uh, Plainfield gave up forty five points in the first half to a great offense. I mean, that's pretty much all you can say when it comes yeah. to Decatur Central Hawks. Tommy Stevens was twelve of sixteen for two hundred eighty three yards and five touchdowns. Wow. Um, he also had one rushing touchdown. And uh, while they may lose Steven- Stevens after this year due to his seniority, they have a freshman like we talked about, Tyrone Tracy. Yeah. I was. He was just, he'll be a dominant force. There's right. no doubt in my mind. Now, JP, I'm sorry. I know you've mentioned this before, but uh, Tommy Stevens, uh, who's he have an offer from? Did you say IU? IU. IU. Good. Now, that's IU's got several dibs in on some quarterbacks around here, so that's going to be a competition in the spring. Yeah, I typically don't turn on the, uh, the Saturday football games, but I did catch a little bit of the uh, Terrapin game this weekend. Yeah. Uh, just to kind of see what IU is about, because I. You know, it's it's funny because you start doing what what we do here on mm-hmm. the show and, and also uh, covering games. You know, I never really followed high school sports. Yeah. I never really cared about college sports. I was always professional, mm-hmm. professional, professional, mm-hmm. professional. But now I've done it. I'm actually curious. I, I wanted to turn on the game. I'm like, I wonder if there's going to be any names I know. Because yeah. I think Cathedral had a, a kid yeah. I was really impressed with last year. Yeah. Uh, he plays for IU now. And, and now next year I get to look forward to trying to see if Tommy Stevens is going to redshirt sure. or not. Um, so there's a lot of options, and I'm looking forward to kind of seeing that as I get yeah, a little bit yeah. older. Yeah, these players will feed into that. Uh, you know, we talked to a guy last, uh, well, the, earlier this evening. I'm sorry, in uh, in Derek, and I hope he gets some offers too. They, I hope that he doesn't get held back by that injury. But uh, you know, Derek, uh, running back for Avon, he deserves some uh, chances to be, and he and he will. He'll, he'll get his offer sheets. Uh, talking about that Tyrone Tracy freshman, he had five rushes in this one for 35 yards. He also caught three passes for 38 yards, <laughs> and uh, you could just see the talent he had in the open yeah. field. He was just he was breaking ankles. He would be a devastating point guard on, yeah. a, on a wow. basketball team. Um, the boys' soccer team for Plainfield is now 11-1 and three on the season. Uh, they defeated Greenwood six nothing. They defeated Morrisville four nothing, um, but couldn't unfortunately get the win against Westfield. They end up settling for the tie one one. Uh, they play Avon in the 2014 Class 2A state tournament on October 6th. Wow, what a draw. You know, Plainfield's had such a great boys' soccer season. Guess who you're going to draw first game in the tournament? You know, I think uh, Avon, I think Avon soccer, I checked today, I think they're rated fourth in the state. So that's sure a tough draw first round. Uh, the girls' soccer team fell to 7 6 and 4 on the year following two straight losses 0 and 3 against Mooresville and Avon. Uh, both those scores ended in 0 3. They play Mooresville again October 7th uh, to start their sectionals. Yep, yep, there you go. Uh, Plainfield Girls Golf, 8th out of 18 regional competition. That was at Smock on Saturday. And there's that. There's our girl again, Kayla Binge. Uh, you got a note here that she uh, qualifies an individual for the 2014 state championship. She qualified. Yep. Uh, she finished in third place only as a freshman. Incredible. You know, she's going to be a talent. You may see her in the pro ranks someday, like we mentioned. Yeah, there's, you know, I mean, you look at, you know, like, like I said, this is, that's to me this is one of the greatest things. We talk about these same people over and over and over again. That's yeah. because of how skilled they are. Yeah, and they're getting results, you know, in a big situation. Uh, the Quaker Ladies Varsity Volleyball team is now 14-9 and on the season. They played in the Greenfield Central Tournament. They went 2-0 and against Weisland. Uh, they lost 2-1 against Greenfield Central, the host of the tournament. And then they lost 2-0 to uh, Mount Vernon. Uh, but they did get the win against Batesville, 2 nothing in their final round. They face Cascade tomorrow mm. and will compete in the Edgewood Tournament this weekend. Those volleyball tournaments, you know, we just talked about how f- fast-paced, physical uh, volleyball can be. They're playing t- two or three games in one day. I don't have any idea how you do that. Best of five sets, that's a lot of work. Um, yeah, you talked about it. I mean, wow. it, it'll be interesting because, like you said, the ske- schedule just ramps up so much, and you have so- these tournaments that, you know, there's more than one match in a day. Yeah, and somebody gets injured, you know, you got to come back. Uh, man, uh, Claire Hathaway, she's got that ankle injury. She's got two more matches to play this week, so good luck. Uh, yeah, those volleyball players, girl volleyball players, i got a lot of respect for them now. It's very tough to do. Uh, lastly, now let's take a look at Avon High School. As we talked about, the Avon football team got yeah. the Big time win, Big win. Um, against a uh, uh, tough ranked Fishers team, and this really might make the HCC a two team race with just uh, just a great win for this Oriole team, Chris. Yeah, and it bunched up the whole top of the schedule. Uh, the, I mean, the standings in the HCC. I think there's a lot of teams four and two, but you know we were uh, we we constantly kept checking the uh, score of that. Uh, I kept asking for it when we were. I was broadcasting, of course, the Brownsburg uh, Westfield game, and I kept hearing that score. And they, they, you know, they led twenty nine to fourteen. I think at half, Avon did. And it's not that I'm shocked. You know, I would never pick. I, I would pick against them. I would say. I yeah, would never I think. Say, you're on record <laughs> picking against them last week. But uh, <laughs> I would never think that uh, you know they're they're 
they don't would stand have a chance to win every home game. That's what I mean. But Fishers, I, I really thought they'd get that job done there. I thought Fishers was by far the best, and here's a great, a great effort by Coach Bless and crew. Yeah, I mean, you talked about it. I mean, this was really a, a very quality win against a very quality yeah, opponent. Absolutely. We talked about it in the in the interview. You know, you wanted to see a measuring stick of where you're at in that Ben Davis game. What's that mean when you turn around and you beat your your HCC rival in yeah. Fishers? Um, and what a good measuring stick that is if you're Coach Bless. Yeah, yeah, and I'd literally love to see him continue this week. I, I'm kind of worried about that Westfield matchup for Avon, though. That's uh, – of course, it never gets easy in this conference, but uh, that's going to be a tough road test. And I maybe I'm wrong. I maybe I detected a little bit of concern by Coach Bless about the weather conditions and playing on turf, which is the first time they'll do this all season. Most all teams now in the big time football in the HEC certainly have the field turf, but uh, Westfield that's a grass field. If it's wet, you know maybe it'll slow down Derek Tennant and Love a little bit. I don't know, but uh, that's a tough matchup Friday night. Yeah, you talked about the HCC standings. Let's go ahead and talk about them a little bit. Uh, like you said. You know, so many teams with a 4-2 and two record in the conference. Um, really, Fishers and Westfield lead the conference with 3-1 conference standings. Uh, but Avon, Noblesville are right there behind them. And Brownsburg isn't far behind with a 1-2 and two in conference record. Uh, but all of those teams stand at 4-2 and two on the season. Yeah, I, and when you look at it, this week's schedule, well, Hamilton, Hamilton Southeastern's at Noblesville. I see Noblesville getting a win there. Uh, they've been the much better team. Brownsburg at Zionsville, boy, that's tough. I don't know which way that's going to go. I think it's a must win for Brownsburg. So I do think Brownsburg will win. That game, Zionsville coming into this, uncharacteristic at 1-5. and five, So they've really struggled with their new coach and everything. Don't sleep on that Tech game. No doubt. Tech at Fishers. That's right. Fishers going to have to get back up. You have to be up each week. Tech is probably the, the best IPS school. No doubt. Uh, at least Good for, athletes. for football this year. Sure, sure. Um, let's uh, continue to talk about girls golf uh, for the Orioles. They played their uh, finished their season with a fourth place finish at regionals with a score of three forty seven, only trailing Center Grove, Westfield, and Carmel. So when you're only trailing yeah. those type of schools, you're Good doing result. something right. Good result. Uh, the girls soccer team is now eleven two and one on the season. They beat both Brownsburg and Plainfield with scores of two nothing and three zero respectively. Uh, they play at Westfield tonight, and then uh, they'll play Brownsburg again in the two A sectionals October 9th. Yeah, here, here I found my note. Uh, Avon Girls Soccer, number four in the state in the coaches poll in the, in the 2A division, the top division. Noblesville's number one. Look at that uh, that matchup you talked about in sectional play versus Brownsburg. So those, the two schools are going to go at it again in a big game, uh, in this time in girls soccer. I'll tell you what, that was one of my most exciting things about last season doing starting to do this show was – Going to the Brownsburg Avon yeah. basketball game. Yeah, I really wanted to go to the football game, but right. I had you know I had a, I had a prior. You were doing another game, correct? Uh, I had a prior commitment to uh, Plainfield, mm-hmm. um, but then you turn around, and look at it. This one is a good opportunity to go out yeah. and see how how big how big that rivalry is. Okay, October the ninth. Okay, we got it. yeah, it's on October the ninth. So hopefully that's a weeknight and we're free. Uh, the Avon High School boys team rebounded from a two uh, zero loss to Curran Catholic with a four two win at Fishers and a four zero win against. Lebanon. Uh, they played Westfield last night at Center Grove tomorrow and at Zionsville Friday, all prior to facing Plainfield next Monday in the uh, state tournament kickoff. Right. Uh, my note on this is Avon High School boys number three in the coaches poll. So both, both uh, fell some, a little yeah, bit. Yep, yeah, a little bit. They used to be one and two. So uh, boys down to number three in the coaches poll, but still you expect them to make a run for a state title here. Uh, boys tennis finished their regular season strong with a 5-0 win against Plainfield and a 5-0 win against Kevin at Christian. So a good way to end the season for them as they yep. get set for sectionals. Yep, and we believe right now they're playing uh, Plainfield, and the winner of that will play Brownsburg tomorrow night in sectional play in boys tennis. Uh, the girls volleyball team went 4-1 and one last week, as we talked about, just a brutal schedule. 4-1 and one in, a, in a week's worth of games. Wait a minute, is that in one week? Yep. They played at Fishers and won 2-0, then they competed in the Cathedral Tournament. As we talked about, these tournament games, um, they went 2-0 <laughs> two, two oh, um, uh, against Penn, 2-1 against New Albany, 2-1 against Center Grove, but lost in the finals to host Cathedral 2-0. Wow. And then they played at Martinsville last night. You know, it's... <laughs> It's probably a good thing, JP, that we don't broadcast volleyball. We, we'd never be home. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be doing a game every night of the week. It, it is, a, you know, it's a fun sport to watch. It's a hard sport to call, but it is it is fun to watch. Yeah, no doubt about it. Very entertaining. Love it. 
Well, that'll just about do it for the show. Uh, it's been a great show for us. The McDonald's Henders County Sports Show is written by me, J.P. Sinclair, and produced and distrib- distributed by AudioSportsOnline.net. Uh, some of the music provided to, uh, for tonight's broadcast is from Evios Music Alley. You can check them out at Mebios.music.com. Special thanks to Avon Head football coach uh, Mark Bless for joining us today and once again bringing some really great players for us to talk to and uh, David Tennant and Nick Hanlon for joining us today. Um, our next show will be in Brownsburg. At the Green Street location. Green Street, okay. Uh, next to I-74, we re- re- record on location on Wednesday with the show airing Friday on xrbradio.com, 1610 a.m., uh, prior to football game time. You can send any feedback to uh, my email. That's jp.sinclair1988 at gmail.com. Any constructive criticism or if you have topics you'd like us to talk on the show. Sure. I know uh, we tra- call it the Hendricks County Sports Show. We do our best to cover Tri-West as well, uh, particularly with Jake Hendershot and the season he's having. But, you know, if you have any other topics you want to discuss on the Hendricks County Sports Show, send those our way. Um, that's pretty much it for the show. Do you have anything else to add, Chris? Nope, we're good. Thank you. That was a good show. And thanks again to Derek Tennant and Nick Hanlon for joining us. Well, thanks for tuning in. Until next time, I'm J.P. Sinclair for Chris Worley, hoping you support high school athletics as much as we do.